Okay, everybody, uh, this is Tiziano, and this is my uh, first interview with the developers. And today is joining, is joining us Eric Maglio. Uh, I, first of all, welcome, Eric. <laughs> Hello, thank you. <laughs> so let me, let me, oh, okay, let me put it this way so we can uh, see both of us, the both of us. I just wanted to, uh, to start these interviews with developers because I feel like all this uh, social distancing is keeping us apart. Uh, I'm basically re re like, living in this room i've been living in this room for a month or more or probably six weeks five weeks now and so we need to you know not only talk on the forum and on the you know on the facebook page but we need to meet the people behind the project so uh a few a, a few days ago i was on the autopilot uh facebook page and uh last week actually and i found this uh video um of Eric Maglio, he was showing something uh, like a weird prototype, and this prototype was uh, not very stable. I'm not Eric. It was a VTOL powered by a jet engine, but it was yawing all, all uh, I mean, all over the place. And then a few days later, he published this video. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. So he published this stuff now. Okay, how cool is that? Guide me through your project. What is it that you're up to? Please, go ahead. Sure. Um, yes, so I've been trying to build an F-35B, the, the short takeoff vertical landing version of the F-35. And this is actually a project that I've been working on for uh, on and off, mostly off <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> for four to five years now. Four to five um, years? Yeah, yeah. Um, so initially it started out, you know, I, I 3D printed the, the uh, duct nozzle for the rear motor. And um, I was working with a KK2 board at the time, uh, running <laughs> open aero software. Um, ArduPilot didn't even have uh, VTOL support yet. No, no, no. Uh, so that's Not the back in those I days. Um, yeah, and I, I had some successes. I had some issues. And for various reasons, it got shelved for a while. And then when I took another look at it this year, uh, I had more experience with ArduPilot. It was doing VTOLs now. Um, I felt that I could take a much better approach and, and try to make it happen for real. Um, so I've been kind of taking advantage of, uh, I mean, the, the flip side to being stuck at home all this time is um, I can really afford to go down to the workbench or, or sit at my desk and, and spend a lot of time uh, getting back to these old projects. And, and I've made a lot of progress. I'm really happy with it so far why you chose the F-35 and what are the main challenges that you faced during your project? Um, well, the challenge itself is is one of the reasons that I chose it for sure. I wanted to model something that was a little bit different that not many people really uh, were able to accomplish in the past. Um, and also, it's a really cool machine to see mm -hmm. in person or to watch videos of it. Um, I mean, it's it's a fighter jet yeah. that doesn't make a ton of compromises, but can can still take off and land vertically, uh, which oh, is yeah. awesome. It is a very very interesting piece of engineering by itself. I mean, um, I'm not sure I have it in a way that I can screen share. Um, let me see if I can but, have it. Yeah, uh, it's me... actually it is ducted fans as well. It's not uh, they're not jet turbines, but. If they're big enough, they've got enough blades that they really s still sound like a jet, um, which is pretty cool. How did you come up with this design? I, I did a lot of, I took a lot of looks at um, you know, how the real one does it. It's, it's pretty similar um, in that you've got, um, here's kind of a prop here. Uh, we've got the, the three rings of, of bearings between Ah, the, look at that. The front of the duct where see. the where the me... fan is and the rear where the nozzle is. Okay, okay, okay. Show me. Yeah, uh, so and then there's there's motors with gears and they rotate each of these segments and if you rotate them in a certain order, you can deflect the whole nozzle um into the vertical configuration. So that's no. uh, that's how the real one works and and that's how I knew that I had to do it. Um but a lot of the challenges with with making a model of this are 
figuring out how to control it, how to make it work well under load. Um, one of the reasons in the first video that you saw that mm -hmm. there was a lot of yaw instability was because um, when there was thrust load on the duct, it was putting enough force on the bearings that, that there was too much friction for the motor. And I, I didn't learn that until afterwards. I added some more bearings and, and I got that straightened out. Yeah, I see. It's a very, very complicated part. How did you come up with the design and did you find any, anything online that did help you out? Um, not really, aside from just pictures. Um, I do a lot of CAD for, um, you know, both for hobby and for a living. Um, I'm an aerospace engineer. I do a lot of mechanical design. Um, and this, I've had enough time. I've been working on it for long enough that um, iteration after iteration, I could refine it and, and get it working well. Um, yeah. I think what you saw in the hover test was the third or fourth version of this. Now, from a, from a software perspective, uh, did you, uh, you're using autopilot, correct? Yes. Um, I'm using Argypilot for the flight control, and then mm -hmm. I, bit, I wrote a bit of Arduino software to actually mm -hmm. control the, the duct nozzle. Okay, and are you in any way changing the, the, the open source code, or did you, do you just use, a, the, do you um, just tune it up with parameters? Uh, I changed it a bit, and, mm -hmm. and that was my first time really doing that since um, I'm not, I have a little bit of experience mm -hmm. uh, writing code, but not enough to call myself a, a regular developer. Um, so with some help from the community and mm -hmm. some of the other, uh, some of the core developers, um, I made a new motor mixer to, to handle the motor layout of the F-35. Um, it's similar to a tricopter in that it's got mm -hmm. one rear motor that does vectoring mm -hmm. for yaw control, um, but it has four total motors instead of mm -hmm. three. Um, the two main lift fans, and then the there's two very tiny roll motors um, out on posts for roll control. Yeah, because as every um, vehicle that flies in a bird, like in, as a beetle, you need at least uh, four independent uh, actuators to control the three in, uh, orientation and uh, uh, vertical direction. So you need at least uh, four independent actuators, and you have. I saw that you have the tail that works as a for controlling the yaw. Then you have also jet on the side for for the yeah, roll. So for the work this here off to the oh, side. Okay. It's a little bit bulky. Oh, perfect. Um, <laughs> but, okay, uh, let's see. The yaw control, the, the okay motors. Yeah. Um, the one ring back here uh -huh. that is part of the transition is also moving the whole duct for yaw. Um, uh -huh. And then I have the roll. Thrusters, little tiny motors. thrusters, yeah, um, those line of tiny motors. Out on here, and then there's the lift fan uh, up in the front. Okay. Um, so if you look at it, you know, top down, the center of gravity is right between the lift fan and the the exhaust of the main fan in the back. Uh, so those are doing pitch control, and then mm -hmm. the little two tiny roll jets do the roll control. Perfect. And the yaw is then using uh, waving around that. Uh, the back nozzle, yeah. and that's the that's the part that was uh, giving you some you some trouble in stabilizing because uh, the load on the bearing is too is too high. Yeah. So when when it's under thrust, it's it's mm. pushing. It's this pushing direction up. Yeah. And yeah. It's making a torque around this ring here. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can see, actually, I've got some ball bearings on the inside of the gears. Mm -hmm. uh, they're probably a little bit more clear to see, maybe along this ring. And then I had to add some more along this side, pressing yep. against the face to support the top of it when the, the thrust is trying to torque it together. Okay. Um, so that is what was able to, to make that jump in stability that you saw from the first to the second video. And then just some conventional tuning should be able to, to get rid of the rest of it and make it really stable. So what's the next step? Uh, definitely more tuning. I've been <laughs> spending a bit of time with it the uh, past couple of days. Um, sharing some logs with people and getting some some opinions, um, mm -hmm. getting a little closer. Um, I think maybe a handful more flights and I'll have it really well dialed. And then after that, I have to start thinking about how I'm going to test transition to to fixed wing flight. Have you have you ever even even started to uh, work around the the real fuselage and the wings? Only a little bit. Um, it's I, I intend for it to be a fully 3D printable model, mm. which mostly means that all of the work that you'd typically put into 
um, crafting a nice airframe has to be put into the design. So the design is going to take a really long time before it actually produces any pieces. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, what I think I'm going to do is build a simpler model, you know, with foam wings, simple parts, so yeah. that I can test transitions and software yeah. and break uh, it. I risk anything. Yeah. Yeah, and break it. Yeah, you you got to be very brave for the first transition. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Probably uh, the safest thing to do is fly, climb as high as possible <laughs> and, <laughs> and give it time to recover uh, if anything goes wrong. Or I don't know. Have you thought about using a parachute eventually for recovering? Because that sounds like a very expensive piece of uh, uh, vehicle that you're going to test. I don't know. I think if I can test all of the individual components separately, mm -hmm. I'll be pretty confident. Um, RG Pilot, of course, it does a great job stabilizing it in hover and oh, yeah. it'll do a pretty good job in fixed wing and it, it's done a great job on VTOL transitions on other vehicles in the past so I think if I can get all those individual elements applied yep. to my aircraft then there shouldn't really be any problems. Big shout out to all the developers that are working on the on the project you mentioned that there are some uh, core developers that are helping you out um, you want to mention them? Yeah so Leonard Hall has been really helpful both in in yeah, tuning RG Pilot, but also um, he's got a fantastic grasp on yeah. control theory. He was able to talk me through how I should code my nozzle to to do the position control. Yeah, um, he he's definitely been very helpful, and and also I've been able to to bounce questions off people like Tridge and and Randy McKay as well. Um, one of the benefits of the RG Pilot, you know, the open source community is that if you need help, it's really not that hard to get it. And and this being my first time actually going and having to change the code um, and, and compile something to put on an aircraft, um, I, I was really fortunate to be able to do that. Well, I think that it's enough for now. I think that as soon as you have some updates on your project, you know, you can just uh, send me a chat. And if you have something interesting to show, just pop an instant message. Yeah, for sure. And, and I'll keep... Uh, posting videos in the RG Pilot group as well. I'm pretty excited to, to share how this is going with everyone. Okay, thank you. And you guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.